In order not to run into serious expenses after buying a used first-generation Audi Q5, it is important to follow a few basic rules. We have tried to formulate them. Buying an Audi Q5 on the secondary market is a lottery in which the chance of drawing a winning ticket is small. Is it really? In 2008, the Q5 became Audi's first foray into the compact crossover segment. And the first experiment is not always successful. And with Q5, the guarantors were not all right. Metal in Germany is of high quality, and the body is galvanized. However, even here, dealers sometimes had to repaint some parts under warranty. The paint on the edge of the wheel arch is held reluctantly. Added hassle and chrome parts. First, the peeling chrome of the grille, and later of the window frames, which were also replaced a lot under warranty. Of the quickly revealed troubles, one should also mention the sweating headlights, which is why the high-tech and expensive stuffing of the head optics invariably fails. And the native headlight is a price thing that is not at all small. The expected problems arose with the S-Tronic Robotic Gearbox, read DSG. Today, by the way, up to half of the cars on the market are equipped with it. The main horror story of the VW concern shoved and twitched in the hands already in the first thousand kilometers. And no exhortations, flashing software, repairing and even replacing mechatronics, did not give long-term positive results. So if possible, you should stay away from the robot. Or thoroughly check it before buying in the service. Maybe 40,000 is enough. The next fad is a 2.0 DFSI petrol turbo engine. The least expensive to buy, so economical that small cars are envious, high torque and elastic. Up to 70% of Q5S left the salons with it, this is 180 or 211 forces before restyling in 2012 and 225 forces after restyling. Everything is with him, except for reliability. First of all, we are talking about the timing chain tensioner. It's not designed for that kind of power. No one is immune from chain jumping. And here's the bent valves. But the main thing is the Moss Losher. How do you like a liter per thousand, on pre-styling machines? By 2012, the piston, however, was brought to life, but the problem was not completely removed. The engines had problems with the fuel pump control unit, ignition coils, intake manifold, and even with the current pump. Although the last episode, rather, from the piggy bank of the aspirated 3.2 FSI, offered before restyling. He, by the way, is the best option. Especially with the reliable AKP8 Tiptronic, the Q5 also has a couple of diesels, 2.0 and 3.0 TDI. The option is not bad, if you do not experiment with the quality of fuel and stick to the same automatic machine or a hassle-free manual gearbox. After restyling, a gasoline 3.0 DFSI also appeared, the thermostat of which should be watched with all eyes, the motor is prone to overheating, but most of the questions on the forums are. No, not the suspension. Everything is fine here and there are no chronic diseases. There are questions about electrical and electronics. Its abundance provokes unsystematic and unpredictable failures, which are too many for a premium car. In a word, the Q5 is good in terms of its capabilities, but you will have to choose wisely, for driving in traffic jams with the S-Tronic transmission, experts recommend the S-Mode and do not be lazy to switch the robot to parking. This will extend the life of both the transmission and the clutch. But the main thing is to change the oil in the robot more often, every 30,000 km. Where products floating in it, chips, just kill the electronic part of the mechatronics. So far, there are no special problems with the MCP and AKP. As well as with all-wheel drive, it makes sense to take 2.0 DFSI engines only after restyling in 2012. They have not only improved the piston group, which is why oil consumption has been reduced to acceptable volumes, but the risk of valve bending due to chain jump has also been significantly reduced. Ignition coils are changed every 80,000 km. Often requires replacement of the fuel pump control unit. The current pump and, as a result, overheating is the risk of all Q5 gasoline engines. You don't have to do the suspension very often. At the front, the upper transverse arms are updated earlier than the lower ones due to the failure of the silent blocks. The stabilizer struts are asked to be replaced after 80,000 km. In cold weather, the chassis makes unpleasant squeaks. In the rear suspension, the struts and bushings of the anti-roll bar, as well as shock absorber bumpers, the resource of which is 100,000 km, often become unusable. The body is decently protected from corrosion, but the chrome parts bloom in the second year, therefore they are considered consumables. There are complaints about the creaking of the panoramic sunroof and the crack-prone windshield. It happens that the trunk servo fails and the door opening sensors do not work. 
a rather massive A pillar and rear view mirrors form a large dead zone. A new headlight is expensive. Already after 60,000 km, the LED eyelash of the size may go out due to the failure of its control unit. But the block can be bought second hand. Electronics glitches are possible, the key reading sensor fails, the start stop system is naughty, the electric drives and the rear window washer refuse dampness under the seat. 